In 2004, archaeologist Professor Patrick McGavern, a leading expert in the field of bioarchaeology, conducted a research at the ancient settlement of Jiayu, located in the Yellow River Valley in modern China. Professor McGavern and his team were searching for evidence of early farming and early civilization practices when they stumbled upon something extraordinary. In pottery dated to around 9,000 AD, they find traces of ancient drink that turns out to be one of the first evidences of human alcohol production. Not only are the vessels found in Jayahu extremely ancient, but they also hold the secret to a unique drink combining grapes, rose hips, honey, and rice. This discovery shifts the chronology of alcohol production. Thus, the ancient Jayahu vessels become a key element in uncovering one of the oldest stories of mankind, the history of alcohol, which began in ancient times. But this story also marks another beginning, the beginning of man-made addictions. In this video, we will look at just that, some of the greatest addictions man has created for himself in his history. The Alcohol Alcohol was one of the first additive substances in human history. In the distant era of our past, alcohol played roles that would seem unprobable today. From a common drink to currency and medicine, it has been an integral part of civilization's progress. The beginning of alcohol's journey in human history can be traced back to the Neolithic period, around 7000 BC. In ancient China, chemical analysis of vessels from the village of Jiahu in Henan province revealed traces of a fermented drink made from grapes, rose hips, honey, and rice. This coincides with reports of the beginnings of beer production from barley and winemaking in the Middle East. The traces of alcohol are not limited to Asia. Then there are the discoveries at Haji Faraz Tepe in Iran, dating from 5400 to 5000 BC, in ancient Egypt from 3150 BC, in Babylon from 3000 BC, and even in pre-Hispanic Mexico from 2000 BC. These discoveries prove the universal presence and importance of alcohol across cultures and errors. But in ancient Egypt, Alcohol was more than just an intoxicating drink. It was a vital element in society, a symbol of wealth, and even a means of payment. In Hierakonopolis, around 3,400 BC, are the ruins of the world's oldest brewery, capable of producing up to 1,136 liters of beer a day. This beer, known as Hecate, was the staple drink of ordinary workers with even the builders of the pyramids at Giza receiving a daily ration of beer. In fact, in ancient Egypt, wages were often paid in beer, with workers at Giza receiving the drink three times a day as part of their overhead. Interestingly, alcohol was important not only in economic life, but also in religious life. In ancient Egypt, for example, a beer and wine were officially recognized and offered to the gods. Even the wine presses had their own god. There are reports, however, that ancient Egyptian beer was not particularly intoxicating as it was also used as a staple food and was nutritious, heavy, and sweet. However, beer could also be an intoxicating as an Egyptian wine, as visitors to the festival of Bast Sekhmet and Hathor got seriously drunk as a sign of their devotion to this goddesses. One Egyptian myth has it that Osiris taught the ancient Egyptian the art of brewing. In 55 BC, the Romans made Cerevisia, from Ceres, goddess of agriculture, and vis, meaning strength in Latin. After crossing the Rubicon, a general and statesman named Julius Caesar distributed beer to his troops, thus beginning the civil war in Rome. In 23 BC, the Chinese brewed beer with millet, 
its consumption plays an important role in Chinese rituals. From the 1500s to the 1700s, historical figures such as Queen Elizabeth I of England founded hundreds of breweries that produced a strong ale that was consumed for breakfast. In addition, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had their own private breweries. Alcoholic liquors were and still are used for many different functions. For pleasure, nourishment, healing, rituals, reward, and even funerary purposes. The Tobacco This plant has conquered and changed the world forever. Its history dates back to 6000 BC in the Americas, where it was prized for its medicinal and religious properties. In 1492, Columbus met native tribes who used tobacco. Rodrigo de Jerez and Louis de Torres were the first Europeans to observe tobacco smoking and introduce the habit to Spain. In Europe in the 15th century, Portuguese sailors spread tobacco around their trading posts. It soon became a traded commodity and grew as an industry in Brazil. By the end of the 16th century, Tobacco had reached almost every country in Europe, where it was consumed by smoking or sniffing, that is, inhaling. In 1571, tobacco was introduced into the market. Nicholas Monards even wrote a book claiming that tobacco cured 36 health problems. Although tobacco quickly gained popularity in Europe and became fashionable among the European aristocrats, it also met resistance. King James I of England wrote a pamphlet against it in 1604, describing it as harmful and unpleasant. Nevertheless, the English continued to consume it at large quantities. In America, tobacco production and consumption increased during the Revolutionary War. In 1847, the Philip Morris Company was founded in Great Britain, and in 1881, the Philip Morris Company. In 1881, James Bonsack invented a cigarette-making machine which gave birth to the American Tobacco Company. During World War I and World War II, cigarettes reached the height of their popularity. Tobacco companies shipped millions of cartons of them to the front lines, creating hundreds of thousands of dependent users. In the 1920s, mass advertising of tobacco products began. Although the harms of nicotine have long been known, it wasn't until the 1930s that American doctors began to link smoking to lung cancer. In 1964 report, one of the most respected surgeons officially confirmed that smoking causes lung cancer. Today, tobacco and tobacco products are under tighter control. Companies have lost numerous lawsuits and are forced to clearly label their products as harmful to health. Despite this, they continue to generate billions of dollars in revenue every year, while destroying the health of millions of people. Statistically, it's estimated that around 1 billion people worldwide are tobacco users, with the damage from this addiction measuring in trillions of dollars in both health costs and environmental damage. Opium and its derivatives. Opium is one of the most powerful substances mankind has ever been addicted to. It traces its roots back to the ancient world. Its history begins in the Mediterranean region, where the oldest opium seeds have been found, dating back to more than 5000 BC. These seeds were used as food, anesthetics, and for ritual purposes. The first known cultivation of opium poppies was in Mesopotamia, around 3,400 BC by the Sumerians, who called the plant Holgil, or plant of joy. Between 400 and 1200 AD, Arab traders introduced opium into China and India. Standard medical use of opium continued until the 19th century. In 1841, U.S. President William Henry Harrison was treated with it, and during the American Civil War, the Union Army used 175,000 pounds, 80 tons, of opium tincture, as well as about 500,000 
opium pills. Despite its widespread use, opium has been the subject of considerable political and economic controversy, particularly in the 19th century. The opium wars between Britain and China between 1839 and 1860 resulted from British attempts to redress the balance of trade in the sale of opium produced in India. However, the Chinese government, trying to restrict its use, confiscated and destroyed large quantities of it, even those belonging to foreign traders, leading to military conflicts with Britain. The first Opium War was from 1839 to 1842 and ended with the signing of the Treaty of Nanking, which granted Britain access to four additional ports in China, including Shanghai, and transferred Hong Kong to British rule. The Second Opium War from 1856 to 1860 led to the signing of the Convention of Diktat of Peking, which extended existent trade arrangements and effectively legalized the opium trade. Today, opium is still used in medicine. However, its abuse is a serious problem, and in many countries around the world, it can lead to addiction, dependence, and a range of other health problems. According to the WHO, in 2022, around 27 million people abused opium worldwide. The highest rates of abuse are in the Southeast Asia and East Asia. The Internet and the Smartphone However, nothing has been able to capture people and change their lives like the Internet and smartphones. The story of this modern addiction takes us on a journey through some of the most technological developments in the modern world. This journey begins with the development of the Internet in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Scientists and engineers from the U.S., U.K., and France began collaborating on computer networks. The ARPANET project, launched in 1969, was the first implementation of the packet switching technology purposed by Paul Barron and Donald Davis. In the 1970s, the first national and international public data networks appeared, and in the late 1970s, the U.S. National Science Foundation, NSF, began funding supercomputer centers at several universities, creating NSFNET which provided network access to these supercomputers to research and academic organizations. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, work at CERN, Switzerland, led by British computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee, led to the creation of the World Wide Web, linking hypertext documents into an information system accessibility from anywhere on the web. Regarding smartphones, the first commercially available device that could be called a smartphone was the Angler prototype developed by IBM engineer Frank Canova in 1992 and presented at the Comdex Computer Show. This prototype, known as the IBM Simon Personal Communicator, was marked in 1994 by Bell South. But the term smartphone was coined by Ericsson in 1997. Shortly before the beginning of 2010, a change occurred in the interface of smartphones. They transformed from devices with physical keyboards to ones with large touchscreens controlled with fingers. The first phone with a color touchscreen was the LG Prada, introduced by LG in December 2006. In January 2007, Apple introduced the first iPhone, which features a 3.5-inch touchscreen and introduces multi-touch phone control. The beginning of phones with the Android operating system, on the other hand, was set by the HTC Dream aka T-Mobile G1. It was the world's first smartphone to run Android, and it was officially unveiled in September of 2008. Innovative for its time, the design featured a traditional QWERTY keyboard that was located underneath the display itself and could be retracted when not in use. With the advent of 3G networks in 1998, mobile phones were first given the ability to connect to the internet, which in turn 
marked the beginning of a widespread use of the Internet via mobile devices. These revolutionary developments in Internet and smartphone technology have transformed the way we communicate, learn, shop, trade, work, and play. From just a means of communication, the telephone has become an integral part of our daily lives, constantly evolving and adapting to the changing needs of society. However, we can safely say that one of the main drivers of the need for smartphone development is Facebook. On the 4th of February, 2004, Mark Zuckerberg launched The Facebook, which predates today's site. The article dropped the name in 2005. Today, the platform has over 3 billion monthly active users. Since its launch, Facebook has caused a furor. Hundreds of thousands of people created profiles on the social network since its launch. Over time, they started spending more and more time on it, and some of them started standing out and getting their five minutes of fame. This also naturally leads to the need for one to constantly check their profile for new friend suggestions, likes, and messages. Others are just curious and use the platform as one big brother to follow their friends or likes. But that's not all. Because on April 23rd, 2005, the first video appeared on the new platform called YouTube. It is only 18 seconds long, and its title, Me at the Zoo, is a long way from suggesting that this will be one of the most important moments in the history of the Internet. Thus, a small video about a man becomes a huge platform for music, news, and entertainment for all mankind. In this video is Jod Karim co-founder of YouTube himself. He's at the San Diego Zoo in front of the elephant's cage explaining how long their proboscises are. And it's like Facebook. YouTube is fast and becoming a separate universe on the internet. So fast, in fact, that before it was even two years old, Google bought it for a phenomenal one billion and six hundred million in 2006. Today we can say that thanks to the internet, Smartphones and these two platforms, as well as the derivatives, people have two lives, real and virtual, with the virtual taking more and more precedence over the real every year. Actually, the fact that our real life slips away while we are subject to so-called instinctive scrolling is not the only problem. A study conducted in 2023 proved that there is a significant link between Internet use an increase in mental health problems among young people, including an increased risk of depression and suicidal thoughts. The study notes a significant deterioration in young people's mental health compared to the 2020 period. There has been an increase in the coincidence of sleep disorders, behavioral disorders, and negative emotions such as loneliness, fear, aggression, or sadness. Studies show that approximately 60% of adolescents experience these symptoms. UNICEF states that 50% of all mental disorders are triggered by the age of 14, highlighting the importance of this period in shaping young people's behaviors and resilience to stress, depression, anxiety, and bullying, particularly in the online environment. And today, just as 9,000 years ago, when people thought alcohol was something useful, we are engulfed in the digital age. The difference is that this time, almost the whole of humanity is in the loop. We dream of making money on the Internet. We shop on the Internet. We study on the Internet. We relax on the Internet. Some of us even live on the Internet. Whether in another 9,000 years, someone will make a video titled, The Internet, Humanity's Greatest Addiction or whether we will have then simply merged with the Internet and will be living in a digital environment, we can only guess. But we'd be interested in your thoughts on this in the comments. Deepen your adventure by watching our playlist. And if you want more, just play the next episode that comes up as a suggestion on your left.